Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. Today we have, well, we had a bit of a mystery. I was brought this John Deere E130, and uh, it's in pretty good condition. It's real clean. The owner says it starts right up. He went to use it, and uh, all of a sudden it would not move forward or back. And I asked him by text before he even brought it over, was it a problem that started over the course of time? You know, did he notice it slowly over the course of a few cuts or a few months or a season? Or did it happen overnight? And his response was it was immediate. It was working fine the last time he used it. He went out to start it up. All of a sudden it wouldn't work. He couldn't figure out what was wrong. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to say thank you to those of you that watched the live stream for the 5,000 subscribers. Uh, it was just a little bit of talk about what's going on in the channel, what's coming, and uh, I totally appreciate that. I do understand that most of my viewers are not live stream people. So I just want to say uh, I am doing a fundraiser right now. I'm attempting to put a new building on this property. I need a little bit of help with that. If you want to help out, there's a link in the description so you can donate as little as a dollar if you like. If you appreciate the content, if I've helped you in any way, uh, help me out. If you want to know what it's about, you can read it uh, on the fundraiser or you can go back and watch my live stream. That's all I'm going to say. And thank you to 5,250 subscribers. And it's only been a week. So, back to the video. So he brought it to me, and there are a couple of things that are possible. Uh, on certain John Deere's, there's a spring that holds down the drive pulley, the, the variable speed drive pulley in the rear end. This is a hydro. Um, there's no variable speed drive pulley in the back uh, to come loose. If you're having that problem, there are a couple of videos on YouTube. I'm sure you can find them. The other question was, sometimes this lever here in the back that releases the pump will kind of vibrate and work its way to the out position. Uh, the out position is what takes out all of the power. Basically, it releases a valve and allows the fluid to flow through the pump and not be restrictive. So you can push this thing around if it's broken. So if you're not aware of that, that's what this lever in the back is for. When it's pushed in, the pump is engaged and the hydro will work and you will not be able to push this mower around your yard or back to your truck. If you need to push it around, you just pull that lever out, disengages the pump, and this thing pushes easily. So I went up underneath, I checked that the belts were in place uh, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Now, granted, I've been sick the last few days. I was in a bit of a hurry. Uh, it was driving me crazy. Because while the belts do look worn, and you'll see that here in the further part of the video, uh, they're stretched, they're worn, they were in place. And uh, so I went, okay, well, I, I had a bunch of machines that were all brought to me on the same day, including that snapper, and that generator and a bunch of other stuff and i just said well I'll, I'll get into it in a few days i've got to get parts for it anyway he wants new blades he wants new belts so at about i don't know two o'clock in the morning it was raining i was laying in bed it was driving me crazy i could not figure out for the life of me what the problem would have been he also told me and showed me when it was dropped off that there are some wires here that got chewed by rats and I said well that's not gonna have anything to do with the transmission so I came out here at 2 o'clock in the morning with a flashlight and I started searching this thing and uh, let me show you what I found alright now we're off the tripod so you'll have to bear with me <coughs> that's your double pulley in the front off the engine this is your deck belt here and on the top, if I can get you up in there, I don't know where I can get this big old, oh shit. 
there's your problem. The drive belt is supposed to be up in the pulley here. And these are the keepers. And these are hardened steel. Uh, pretty thick. And it's not normal. I can barely get my fingernail in between this pulley and this keeper. And there's also, I can't see anything, but there's supposed to be one on the front and another one on the other side. And what happens is people don't want to take off their drive pulley. So they'll use a pair of pliers and they'll bend these tabs back, which is absolutely fine if you only do it once in a while, because you all know with steel, when you bend it and then you bend it back, you weaken it and it can break. So be careful with that. But in this case, I can barely get my fingernail in there, okay? The front one doesn't look too wide. The other side one doesn't look too wide. And I cannot figure out, I mean, stuff happens, but I've already tested that the bolt is tight. The pulley is not moving up and down, and it is up where it's supposed to be in those keepers. So somehow, this belt had just worked its way out of the pulley in the keeper, which is the strangest thing in the world. So anyway, uh, I got all the new belts. We're gonna replace those real quick. So I just wanted to let you know that as weird as that sounds, that can happen. So if you have this issue and you you know, you know haven't checked the belts real good, I was back there checking the the idler pulleys and I don't know what you can see but I was checking idler pulleys and making sure that they hadn't worn out and making sure that there was no problems with those looking at the thinness of the belt and thinking uh, it definitely needs to be replaced but it never even occurred to me to check that drive pulley so let me get you back in the stand well the first thing we're gonna do real quick here is remove this deck so if those of you that tuned in because you want to see how to remove a deck it's real simple right here you have a pin that needs to come out there's a washer behind it you take that out also on your bracket here there's another pin take that out don't lose the washer put it back where you found it and that is the stabilizer arm then on the front here you have to get this belt out of this keeper all right, just like that. And if it's too tight, which it shouldn't be touching, but if it's too tight, you can usually just pull that back with your finger and get that belt out. Take it off the front. There's also a keeper on the other side. We'll do the same thing. Let's see if I can get that off with one hand. Now our belt is out. This is our, uh, our deck belt. Now on the front here, right on the front of this, on the front side of this tab is another one of those pins. You're gonna pull that pin out and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side and pull the deck out and I'll show you. Now once you get all those pins pulled out, you're gonna see the rear bracket here comes out very easily and it's a twist, okay? It's on threads. This is how you raise and lower the deck. So you would pull this arm out, you would twist this nut up or down depending on whether you wanna raise or lower the side of the cutting deck and then put it back in place. So don't mess around with that too much if you like where it's set. The only other thing that's left is your blade engagement cable and that goes on just like a regular lawnmower deck. On the back side there will be a pin or it could be a flex twist and it just fits in there and you pull it out and now we've got some room to pull that deck. Or as Tara would say to jerk that deck. Carol's a funny guy. Uh, Once all that is free and clear, please guys, make sure you're in frame. In fact, I'll bring you over. If you have to take off these covers, these covers are very important. They're more than just dust covers, okay? They actually keep your blade, your belt on your pulleys. This person, the last person to pull them off, did not even put the bolts back in it. Okay, it looks like there's one bolt in this thing. And if this thing is not working correctly, 
your belt can just slide right off that pulley. So make sure you put those back on. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Once you pull your engagement cable out of here, it connects via spring right here. This lever moves back and forth, puts pressure on the belt. So you're gonna need to take this spring off. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it until you figure out how it comes off. I'm gonna back you up and do it. Hopefully the camera doesn't fall over. Whew. So the fun part usually is trying to figure out where you have to put this spring in order to get it out of this little hole that it's in. And it's always a pain in the butt. I don't know why the last person to mess with this did not put it in the other way. I had to bend the spring up in order to get it out of there. You can put this on upside down just like that, boom. Put it on, take it off. So don't go hook down. Go hook up whenever possible. It makes it easier for the person that's working on your machine. Once that's out of the way, just put it up where it's out of the way. And then you can pull your deck. <laughs> And let's just get it out of there. Now, we have to change the drive belt as well, which will be on the next video if you're interested. But most of these, oops, most of these machines have a very simple setup. It's, pardon my language, cock and balls okay the drive pulley is always in the front of the deck goes up around the drive pulley comes down and around both of these idler pulleys this one happens to be the one that's spring loaded that puts tension on it when you turn on the blades when you pull that cable it pulls that puts tension on that belt makes those blades turn once it comes down the bottom side of the balls then it just goes around the outside straight across and straight back around so if you needed the belt diagram on a John Deere E130 or just about any other tractor out there with a single belt that's on your blade deck there you are <clears throat> now on the other side they didn't even put the pulley guard back on which actually keeps the belt on there it's unfortunate and there's nothing I can do those are way too expensive. You can try and find them on eBay. Uh, people don't understand that those actually work as keepers. See, on every one of these pulleys, there's a keeper, right? That keeps very little space between the pulley and the keeper so that the belt can't just come out whenever it wants to. There's the one on that one, okay? Well, that's what these are on the main spindle pulleys. So make sure you put those back. So now all I'm going to do is pull that belt, or that bolt, out of that. And then I'm going to show you how to just pull that off real quick and feed the new one. All right, I'm a little out of breath. Spent 45 minutes looking for a single tool. Remember, kids, put your tools back where you got them. I right, took the bolts out of this cover. Take that off out of the way. You take... You loosen these so that you can lift that pulley up and get that belt off. Don't lose your nuts. You do the same thing over here so that you can get the pulley off. Sometimes they're a bit stuck. They've been on there for a while, so you got to kind of persuade them just a little. Don't mess up the pulley with the hammer. Sometimes they just don't want to come off, do they? All right. Let's go get a big screwdriver. I want you to see this. Sometimes they've been on for so long that they just get stuck on the shaft as well. And you have to 
get a little pressure on there. And persuade it to come off. Now, some people would say, oh, I'll put a little bit of grease or something in there uh, to make sure that doesn't happen again. You can see it comes off pretty easily. You could put some never seize in there if you want to, but the problem is that this pulley needs to spin on the bearing inside. So if you put grease or never seize in between the pulley and the little post that it sits on, that could slide and cause issues. So I usually don't. You take that off, make sure that's back just in the place it's supposed to be. Then you could take off your belt. Now let me get the new belt and we'll just reverse the process. Easy peasy. All right, let's blow some of this crap off of here. Which I should have done before I started. Let's see if I can show you what else we got. All right, now, I got my old belt, and it's against my new belt, and you just pull them tight, and I find that the belt is just about exactly the same size, if not a tiny bit longer, and you might say to yourself, well, that's not the right belt. But here's the difference, if you can see. The old belt is much thinner than the new belt, both widthways and height. You may not be able to tell that, but I measured them, and this belt is so worn down that it's going to lose several inches of bite on the inside of there. I wish I could show you better, but I don't have the right camera set up. You see the difference there in the belt? How the old one is skinnier than the new one? Well, that takes up length. So, while this belt would be okay for an emergency backup, and I'm going to give it to him, and I'm going to have him keep it as an emergency backup in case this one breaks for some reason in the future, which they tend to do sometimes. But while we were already here changing the belt, we just decided that it needed to be changed. And we were going to go ahead and do both while we were here. I'm going to do the drive belt in the next video. So if you want to see the drive belt being changed, wait till next Saturday. New, ba new, be uh, ha! new videos come out every Saturday at 10 a.m. So that's it. All you have to do to put your deck back in place is double check that everything is moving correctly double check that all your springs are in place sometimes you'll find that the end of a spring has broken and the spring is either laying down somewhere or it's missing altogether so there is a spring that goes here there's a spring that goes here these springs are invaluable you cannot use your deck without them there is a spring that goes on the brake lever here when you pull your PTO lever it engages like so and when it pulls far enough it pulls the brake lever away from your spindle on both sides so make sure that all your levers and springs and everything are in place those are tight they spin freely that's back in place we can go ahead and reverse the process and put the deck back on make sure that you put your belt cover back on if you have them Hopefully you do. All I have to do is put another bolt in there and I'm gonna find some more bolts in my stash for them. So, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the thumbs up, uh, the likes. Hit the subscribe button, it's somewhere between my chin and my balls. And the next video will be me putting the drive belt on this machine. So, I'll see you soon.